I was born October 17th, 1966, in the United States of America. And, and early on, I was taught not to be prejudiced because of the color of someone's skin and not be prejudiced because of their religion or to be prejudiced because maybe they had different views or different thoughts or maybe they were just different altogether. And when I went to school, I studied uh, American history and I couldn't stand American history in the first place, but we studied such topics as the Revolutionary War, not knowing that that may or that topic may become a very real reality later in my life. But I have to admit, I graduated with full honors and walked away with a diploma nestled up under my arm and I was real proud of myself, you know. But as a young man, I left the nest and I started providing for myself, um, you know, feeding myself and clothing myself and Again, I was taught to, you know, work hard to obtain the good things in life. Like like the, the cool car and the big house and money in the bank, disposable income. So that that way I could do the things that I wanted, you know, like travel around the world and, you know, visit different countries and, and study other cultures so that that way I could really appreciate the country in which I resided. And as I grew older, I was reminded time and time again that America was the best country in the world. And we, we welcome people from all walks of life, from around the globe. We welcome them to start again, to better themselves. Maybe we welcome them to shield them from political persecution, to shield them from totalitarian governments, to shield them from the injustices in which they endured in their own country. And, and we did it time and time and time and time again. But something changed, 9-11. Yep, when 9-11 happened, our own government attacked us. But yet we were led to believe that 19 foreigners took over the most powerful country in the world. And we were force-fed some nonsense that we were all supposed to accept. But see, America was transformed very quickly after that because of what 19 supposed terrorists did to us, um, then we, we the people, we had to suffer because of it. Because of what 19 supposed terrorists did to us and they killed our countrymen. Over 300 million people had to pay the price. Because, see, when the Patriot Act, when the Patriot Act took root, we were all watched, we were spied upon, we were secretly listened to, you know. Our freedoms and our rights were encroached upon by our government. <laughs> we even had, you know, like checkpoints that were 60, 70 miles away from our borders with, in my opinion, illegal search and seizure. This is not Nazi Germany, last time I checked. See, the mainstream media these people are supposed to report the news without bias, without opinion. If there's a fire, a fire happened. Not, oh, there was a fire today, and uh, you know what I think what happened? I think what happened. No, they are to report the facts, period, the end. But no, they're not doing that. They are trying to divide our country through fear and intimidation. America has turned into some kind of corporate conglomerate where the, the government and corporations, they walk hand in hand. Or, or like some political rock stars with corporate 
promoters for some corrupt concert that you and I are being forced to buy their ticket to perpetuate consumer debt. So am I asking for my country back? No, I'm not. I'm demanding it. I'm demanding from the president to every politician, to every member of Congress, to the people in, in the Senate, to every police officer, to everyone in the military, to anyone that has ever taken that oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, do just that. So I look you in your eye and I tell you that you can take your plastic smiles and your plastic wars and your plastic terrorism and your plastic vaccines and your plastic patriotism and you can try to mold a different set of people that is not, not plastic. I monograph, and if you can't speak freely, you're simply not free.